Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe After Effects CC tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Colorama effect to create some cool stylization, heat map effects, or just color tinting and correction. So if you're enjoying these videos, leave a like on them below, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube so you don't miss any of my future videos, and follow me on Instagram at Justin Odisho to keep in touch with me. So I've got a test project open with this clip in it of these two guys playing guitar. This effect I think would be uh, cool in one example for music videos or stylizing in those sort of abstract trippy ways. But in order to find this effect, let's head over to the effects and presets panel and search for one called Colorama and we should find it in the color correction folder. So I'm going to click and drag this onto my clip layer and you should see by default it kind of gives it this rainbow gradient map effect. I always like to relate After Effects to being like the video version of Photoshop in a way. And this is similar to the gradient map effect if you've ever seen it in Photoshop, where you can tint the blacks to one color and the whites to another color and all the ranges in between. So if we head to the effects control panel on the left hand side, let's drop down some of these menus. We have different input output cycles and phases, and we can get a basic idea of how this effect is working. So this is the Colorama wheel that's being applied onto this video clip right now. And it's mapping all of these colors from shadows being red all the way around the entire color wheel. So we can actually adjust this to be whatever I want. This is just the default, but let's just check through some of their different presets they have. So they have some like called sunset. This is just more like purple, red, orange. Uh, they also have some like red, green, blue, or green, red, solarized black and white, or red or green. So you can see how you can use this effect one to color tint and stylize in a lot of different ways, but there's also plenty more parameters and controls that you have. So let's just kind of work down the list. I'm going to set it back to the default hue cycle. So input phase just describes where it wants to pull its original data on, you know, what is the shadow, what is the highlight. So intensity, or you could do something like red. So just the red color channels or the green color channel. You also have the ability to add more input phases either from masks or other clips that you have in the project. So I do have another clip here. Let's say I have this other clip of this flower. I can add an input phase from the flower. And now we kind of have a blend of both of those. And then phase shift is just where in the cycle do you want what to start? So instead of the highlights or the shirt being red here, I can shift that circle over so that the shirt is blue and the highlights and it just kind of flips. So you can choose exactly where in the cycle you want. And the cool thing when you're working with video is you can animate these things. So if I click this stopwatch icon and add a keyframe at the beginning at zero and then at the end of the clip or however long, make it go through two full rotations of the color cycle, then you could get a cool interesting effect like that as well where the color is cycling in and out of the input. Just for reference and visual inspiration, I found this technical heat map color gradient on Google. There's obviously different ones. And no, this effect is not actually going to represent the actual temperature of what's happening in the images. It's just visually inspired by that. Let's go back to the effects control panel and try to create a gradient like that. So let me move this over a little bit to the left. Let's create a new point and make it solid white. That'll start it off. Let's create another new point and make it black. And let's move that into a dark blue. I'm going to change this to a dark blue. I'm actually just going to take this point from here, move it over there. And then from cyan, we have green and then yellow. So I'm going to change this blue color to a bright yellow. So I'm just going to delete this by clicking and dragging it off until it disappears. So I'm going to balance out some of these colors here, make this blue a little bit lighter perhaps. So I'm actually going to see how it looks without the white. I'll click and drag that totally off and just move the black back to the center. And now I actually have a lot more of a thermal heat map look. Uh, obviously it's just reacting based on lightness temperatures, not actual body heat. That's why the white t-shirt looks red. But if you're just trying to give the impression of the effect, you could definitely go with this, add different text overlays and animations. Another really cool thing is that you can add transparency. It doesn't, you don't have to map every single color. For example, in the middle of this wheel here, 
I can actually make this less transparent, even more less transparent, or just all the way transparent. So now I have this interesting effect going on where we still have all of the original colors from the clip in the middle portion, but just on the highlights and shadows, we have the pink and black. So that's actually creating a cool effect in itself. You could use it to stylize color grade tints, but it's a little bit powerful. And that's why if we actually skip down to the bottom here, like we do have with most effects, you can always blend the strength of this. If we blend it more with the original all the way to 100%, now we're back at our original clip and nothing is actually on it. But if we take it all the way back down to zero, now you see the effect is coming in on the shadows. So right under that, you have cycle repetitions. So right now it's just one, but you can make it more complex by increasing the cycle repetitions. So now it's going through the entire input cycle more and more and more. Really cool, and you can see how these possibilities and flexibility of this effect start to add up. And next up, we have the modify section. So modify kind of chooses what do you want this effect to impact. So right now it's impacting everything, but if I choose to only impact the red color channel or only impact the green color channel and so on, we can isolate the effect to only happen on certain portions, which can also add a lot more flexibility if you want to have even more control over the area that it affects, we can head over to the pixel selection drop down and turn matching modes on. So right now it's off. Let's choose RGB and we can choose to match a certain color to be affected. So if I just drag around, you can see what happens is that if I head over to the highlights, it'll start applying them to there. The shadows, it'll start applying it to the shadows. So you could see that's created some transparency there because we have transparency in the output cycle, but I can fill that back in if I want. And I can change things like the softness, the feathering, and the tolerance of that color. So that's another section that can give you more control. I'm gonna turn it off for now. And masking layer as well, another way to choose what gets affected based on intensity or the shape or certain masks. So this is another way to blend but that can get pretty complex, pretty advanced, and you can really stretch the possibilities of the different things you can create. But overall, I hope you can see some of the power, flexibility, and fun of the Colorama tool as a stylization, color correction, or color tinting and color grading tool can be. If you enjoyed this video, definitely leave a like on it. Let me know what you thought in the comments and subscribe to my channel here on YouTube so you don't miss any of my future videos. You can follow me on social media at Justin Odisho on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter to reach out to me and stay connected. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.